Welcome to the EEP blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 15. All right, no mucking around this week. We'll get to everyone's favorite part of the blog. It's equipment review time, and yes, it's another multimeter, and yes, it's another Fluke. It's the Fluke 189 Series 2. Now, this is a rather interesting meter because you actually you may have heard of the 189 and you think it's actually discontinued but this is actually the 189 series 2 and it really wasn't out for very long and it's basically um the same as the 289 the fluke 289 so this was sort of an interim model between the 189 series 1 and the uh, 289, which you can currently buy, and it's basically a Fluke 289. Now, a colleague of mine uh, actually loaned me this um, to do a review of, and he actually wanted me to compare it to the Fluke 87.5, which is my meter, which I've reviewed uh, before. So we'll, we'll pretty much do a review, a comparison of the 189, well, I'll call it the 289 now, shall I? The 289 versus the um, 87.5. There they are, and um, let's see how they stack up. Now the 289 is Fluke's uh, top of the range handheld uh, meter. It's actually a data logging meter, and that's the main difference between the 289 and the uh, 87.5, is that um, this one has data logging capabilities, and it actually has a PC interface capability on the end there as well. Yeah, so its main difference is uh, increased accuracy specs and Data logging. Um, well, the first thing that um, strikes you is is the size of it. It's um it's bigger. It's you know fairly substantially bigger than the um, 87 uh, series and or a Fluke 70 series, and it's it's quite hefty as well. It's um it's large and it's heavy, and this is probably the main uh, gripe I have against it is that it's probably a bit too big and heavy for an average everyday bench use um, just for just for doing your basic stuff it's it's probably not the best choice because it's a bit big and clunky on the bench and and the uh, tilt stand isn't that great on it once again they've gone for this plastic flimsy plastic thing again which feels like it could actually break um, and yeah and it's actually got the integral rubber holster um, unlike the uh, 87 which has the traditional um, holster which you can actually remove um, and I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the integral uh, rubber holster I much prefer the one that you can actually take off and replace and things like that but it's not too bad it's, it's got the nice f solid fluke feel to it which is really good so yeah it's, um, it's certainly got that traditional fluke quality about it and of course it's uh, still made in the US, it's got made in the US of A on the back here and um, that means they can keep their um, uh, the control of their assembly quality really good um, better than when they're made in China, nothing against getting them made in China it's just that if you have your own in-house facilities um, it's just easier to keep track of your manufacturing quality so that's good now the main specs are pretty impressive 0.025% uh, uh, basic DC volts accuracy plus two counts. It's not plus one like this, but um, you can be forgiven given that it's 0.025%, which is pretty impressive. 1% on cap, and um, it, it basically, it pretty much matches the spec fairly similar to the 87.5. It beats it in most respects, but not by a huge margin. Um, so they're essentially very similar. Now, as far as uh, features go, feature set, they're very um, similar. Basically, apart from the data logging capability, of course, you, you know, you really can't pick them from a feature set point of view. But this one is uh, um, four and a half digit 50,000 count. This is four and a half digit 20,000 count. So this one definitely has the edge. Now, one thing that's got me worried about this is they advertise it in, uh, advertise the fact that you can upgrade the firmware in it. You can field upgrade the firmware. Yeah, that's great, but, you know, <laughs> this thing, you never need to have to upgrade the firmware. The firmware's, you know, it's sealed in there. There's nothing to upgrade. You can always rely upon it. If this is firmware upgradable, you've got to think, well, what little, you know, hidden problems are there in there? And, um, but, you know, firmware upgrade's good. When you get to this sort of data logging capability, 
you know, you, you sort of the software increases by tenfold the software complexity and stuff like that. And um, so I probably don't blame them for having firmware upgradable. Oh, well, having the firmware upgradable, really. So, you know, that, that's a good feature, I guess. Now, the uh, 189 Series 2 or the 289 has um, substantially changed from the 189. The major difference is the display. As you can see, it's a uh, quarter VGA um, screen. It's a full dot matrix screen with a uh, white backlight, which, uh, well, yeah, it's actually white, but it sh probably shows up a bit blue on there, but it's supposed to be white. And um, that's the main difference. It's basically a full-on dot matrix display. And the contrast isn't really as good as a... I'm not sure if it shows up on here, but, you know, the, the digits are much bigger on the 87.5, so they're better for general use. And, um, and the contrast is much better on a seven-segment display, and I much prefer the seven-segment displays. I'm not a huge fan of the full dot matrix to display but as I'll show you later it allows you to draw graphs and do other fancy stuff so you know has its pros and cons. Now another really annoying thing about these um, top end multimeters, Fluke aren't the only ones who have this issue, basically all these top end data logging multimeters they're all menu based and for general day to day use I find that really annoying. Because look, you know, if you're on uh, DC volts and you want to, um, you know, you actually want to zero out the measurement or something like that, you've got to press the menu button here, which is F1, and then you've got a uh, you've got a bunch of menu options here, and you've got to scroll down to the relative option, and then you've got to press that, and then that eventually rolls out. And it's nice, you know, you've got these multiple displays here, which is really nice. That's the advantage of the um, dot matrix display, but just for general use, it's a bit, it's a little bit annoying. I much prefer your traditional, uh, for everyday use, I much prefer the traditional um, interface like this, which has the dedicated buttons, and they just work. Single button press and it's done. You don't have to muck around with any menus. And yes, as you'd expect from a fluke, the uh, screen updating, or the actual um, updating speed is very fast, and it's responsive, and the measurements, you know, it's really good and it's a really top quality um, usable meter really so there's no complaints in that department. Now the other major gripe I have against uh, the 189 and 289 series meters is the battery life. The original uh, 189 I think was only 50 hours battery life. It was awful and if you turn on the backlight it would you know, it would die in hours or something like that. It was atrocious really and um, as opposed to you know many hundreds of hours for the um, you know the Fluke 87 and the Fluke 70 and your regular general purpose meters and um, and this one uh, the new 289 has a hundred hours um, standard life of the battery and that you know it's better but it's still not in the same class as this so for general purpose use that's quite annoying and the other amazing thing about it is that um, it actually doesn't use your traditional 9 volt battery. I've taken the uh, back panel off and it uses 6 double A's. So the capacity um, in this battery capacity is, you know, 3 or 4 times what's in a 9 volt battery uh, used in one of these. And yet it's got, you know, a quarter of the battery life, you know, one fifth the battery life. It, you know, it doesn't make sense. So the design of the 289, not much thought really has gone into uh, minimizing the battery life and that really annoys me. And as you'd expect from a fluke as well, the um, input overload circuitry is the best in the business. Basically it's got high HRC fuses for high rupture capacity. Um, you know, and if you look at the internal construction, um, you know, the, it's all isolated from the main electronics and it's, it's just really nicely designed and the probes are top quality and they're a really safe, reliable meter that will actually meet their um, high voltage and high current specs as opposed to a cheaper meter which, um, you know, generally will, you know, blow up at half its input rated voltage if you're unlucky.